Hi Greedy 3 Ds. now you know I love my GK2 from Uniformation. It is, beyond doubt, my favourite printer in the whole world. And in the UK here, coming into winter, it is going to earn its keep with its built-in heater. I've come across a problem with it that you might, in the future, come across yourself. And I'll show you how I got myself out of a real sticky situation. Stay tuned. <music> Uniformations GK2 is beyond doubt one of the best printers you can get. It's got a heater, which is probably one of the only printers out there with a heater built in. It's got an innovative way to remove the vat and to remove the bill plate. And the vat itself, it just literally slides in. And when you're ready to get it out, it slides out. There's no knobs to twist. There's nothing to tighten. It just slides in and it slides out via four little feet at the bottom. All well and good, you may say. But what happens if that vat gets stuck in situ? Well, let's have a little look at something that's happened to me quite recently. I did a print. I came and I retrieved the print off the bill plate, but try as I might, I could not remove the vat from the printer. I tugged, I pulled, and it wouldn't go. Now, don't be tempted to hit it. Don't be tempted to poke anything under it. There are little feet under there that if you damage it, it will not work. Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. But don't panic, greedy 3 ds I'll show you what to do. First thing you need to do is empty the resin from the vat. Now, what I do to do that is I'll tilt it backwards so that it pulls at the back and I'll use my trusty Cyril the syringe to pull that resin out of the back of the vat. If you haven't got one of these syringes, I'll put a link in the description, but these are absolutely fantastic for things like this to get resin out when you can't really get at the resin vat. So gently do it. You don't want to be poking it through your FEP, but you do want to be getting as much of that resin, if not the majority of it out. And this is a brilliant way to do it. Now, when you pop it back into your container, remember to use a filter and a funnel and pop it back in and then keep going until you've got all of that resin out. Now, if you haven't got a syringe, you can use a spoon or something along those lines, but a syringe is what I would recommend you do to get it all out. And once you're happy that you've got the majority of it out, you're going to need a secret weapon, the hairdryer. So use the hairdryer to just warm the vat all the way around, work on the sides, work on the back, go right the way across it, and if there's some resin underneath, this hairdryer will loosen that resin and give you the chance to pull the vat out. So give it a good old warm all over, and then once you've given it a warm, pop it back down so it's got a firm base, and give it a tug. And voila, it popped out. I was so relieved to see that it had popped out, but if you look closely, you can see what's happened. I've had a bit of a failure in the FEP, and there it is on the screen, and that's what was sticking the build plate to the screen. Quite a common thing that could happen with the Uniformation GK2. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing you guys need to do is take the protective screen protector off. I could get it off with my fingers, so I just lifted up the corner and I used a nice pair of pliers and I pulled it off. Now, the thing with the GK2 screensavers, I'm sure you'll come across this, is there is a right old amount of glue sat underneath them. And I tried to get it off using a plastic scraper. Don't use anything metal that near to your screen. But you know what? It just wouldn't come off. So here, I just used my finger and I rubbed it and I rubbed it until it all came away. Now I was really lucky that GK2 guys had sent me a screen protector with the printer but I will put a link in the description where you can buy them from. So the first thing to do is just make sure that your screen is free from any little bits or any bits of dust or dirt or any sticky bits and if you look at the front of the screen protector you'll see a little note there that says tear off before the application. Seems a little bit backwards to do this first but I'm going to follow what it says and take that off first. Then I remove the sticky off the back, use that plastic scraper to make sure I push it down and not put any air bubbles in. There's a little groove on there as well that you can just fit it into on the base on the screen. So push it down, get rid of any of the air bubbles and that is your screen well and truly protected. Next thing I want to do is just test the screen. So I'm just going to do an exposure test on there and there'll be a couple of images that appear on the screen if everything is working. But just to make sure the whole screen is working and not just the center, I'm going to do a vat clean 
process as well so just make sure the screen is working and I'm happy that everything is working as it should be and that is all protected the next thing I did and I won't bore you with the whole detail was I changed the FEP to this information FEP and again I'll put a link in the description it took me about 20 minutes so it's fairly straightforward plenty of videos out there to show you how to do it and that FEP is now changed and cleaned I've got a new screen protector I've got a new FEP and the whole process is back to normal and it's all working wonderfully. Now, the only thing you would need to do if heating it up with a hairdryer doesn't work is take a really, really sharp knife and cut around the inside of the tray to remove the FEP and then take the actual tray out and then carefully remove the FEP. I'll put also a link in the description to where you can download a PDF spreadsheet that will show you how to do this. Now, you may never come across this problem with the GK2. You may own one for years with no issues. But if it's happened to me, the chances are it's going to happen to someone else. And that someone could be you. A little break in the FEP and the thing is stuck to the printer. Well, I hope you may have just seen today how you can solve this problem without fretting, without worrying, without panicking. It wasn't a difficult fix at all. I managed to put it all back together again and sort the problem out. And you can to. These problems are going to occur indefinitely across the internet. They will happen to someone at some stage, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's happened to me. I'm quite glad it's happened to me because if you can learn something from it and be not too worried moving forward, then it's a win-win situation. Um, see you next time on Greedy 3D. Thank you to my Patreons. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you real, real soon. We'll be making some models next time. I've got some lined up in the process. See you soon. Mm -hmm.